God was uh, revealing to me some things about um, our understanding of the word and our understanding about how the supernatural happens, how healing happens, uh, how the things of God happen. And, and I know that uh, when I read scripture many times, especially uh, the accounts of Jesus, when people got healed, I, what I do is I read, skim through until the, the end. And they get, did it, yeah, 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 yeah. everybody wants to go to the happily ever after and not the, the meat, but the meat that we need is in between because your healing will come. The total manifestation will come, but what will get you there is what happens between when you initiate that request and will it manifest. And so when you start on your journey of healing, and we're all on that journey. I don't know of anybody who doesn't need restoration, wholeness, soundness in some area because Jesus died for those very things. But when we start to want to understand these things, we have to go for the meat in between and understand how these things happen so that we won't be disappointed. Amen. God wants you to continue until you receive what he has for you without quitting. And so this is this is what we do. When we have these healing schools, we get into the meat of things so we really get understanding. Because as a minister, as a believer, we're all uh, expected to pray for the sick. Amen. And uh, I can tell you one thing about the anointing. It grows if you feed it. And if you keep yourself, amen, you keep yourself in a position to help people. God will always anoint you, amen, according to the proportion of your faith. So it's always good to increase your faith and, and have understanding and all thy getting get understanding. So here we are, uh, John chapter four, start in verse 43. Now, after two days, he departed thence and went into Galilee for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Then when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went to the feast. So Jesus came again to Cana, a Galilee, where he had made the water wine. That was his first miracle, amen. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and besought him that he would come out and heal or come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Now listen, uh, Cana and Capernaum are not like next door. It ain't like running across the street. It's at least a day's journey. So this man is expecting Jesus to come and walk with him a day's journey so that his son would be healed. Okay. Now there's something in that request that if you pay attention to it, it will pay you off big dividends. He's expecting Jesus to heal this boy but it's not gonna be instant. Many of our healings, amen. Many of our healings are not instant and we have an inclination that it won't be, amen. We want it instant. Like if, if I speak to my body and I have, come on in sweetheart, if I have pain and I speak to my body and, and I command the pain to go away, I'm expecting it to leave right away because I want relief. If it lingers, I can talk to it again and talk to it again, but I must believe that it is going to go. And so what you have to believe whenever you begin to believe God for something like healing, you got to believe that you are beginning to get better from the moment you pray and believe. When Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, believe that you receive what you pray for and you will have it, you must believe at the time you pray that you received it and you are beginning to amend from that hour. 
because the devil will do everything he can to make you think that you're getting worse and not better. He will come to you with greater symptoms. He will come to you and try to torment you in the middle of the night. He'll try and even tell you why God is not going to heal you. Yeah, you thought you had it. You thought you could just talk to stuff and it would go. You ain't Benny Hinn. And you <laughs> he knows all the honey. He know more ministers than we do. And so he will try and talk you out of believing that you are healed right now. And from the moment you believe God, you started to get better. You must believe that. If you, you know, that's a revelation that's, that's like, <laughs> as the Lord told me to tell you, it's money in the bank, cash the check and spend the money. You got me? Because if, if you can't grab onto that, then the enemy will steal every single thing. If you can't believe from the time you pray till you walk out of the door, that God is still healing. He's still working. He's still helping you. He's still whatever it is. He's working on it. And he won't let you suffer beyond what you're able. This is the other thing that people get scared about. If whatever it is, if it's something that involves pain or discomfort, we always think it's going to get worse before God can step in and intervene for us. And that's not true either. He has such mercy and such compassion. So we'll be able to see those things as we go through this story. So Jesus said uh, when he went down there, the, this guy who, whose kid is sick, he's uh, actually Capernaum was about 16 hours from Cana on foot. So that's a day's journey. And so if he's expecting Jesus to come with him and he's going to heal his son, where is his, what do you think he has faith for? Huh? He must have faith that that kid's not going to die before Jesus gets there. You understand? So we have faith for the time element involved. When you pray, and God says, yes, I will heal you, or yes, I'm coming with you. Whatever it is that you're asking God to do, whatever it is that you're asking, you already have factored in the time element when you pray. It's In other words, it's never too late to pray. Because this man was already, he already had to believe that Jesus wasn't going to let his kid die, even though it would take him a day for them to get there. Faith is very powerful, folks. You you know, we kind of like play it cheap a little bit. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it works all the time. And it works on everything and it works completely to take care of the whole situation. It's not just a half situation here. So it says the Jesus came again to Cana in verse 46, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And it says here, when he heard Jesus was come out of Judea to Galilee, he went to him and besought him that he would come down and go with him and heal his son. For the boy was at the point of death. So if you can believe for all of that time, He's believing that not only Jesus is going to come with him and walk with him for an hour, but he's also believing that somehow that boy's not going to die until they get there. I'm going to say it again because y'all ain't ready to spend the money yet. That's, huh? Y'all ready to take it to the bank, cash the check, and spend the money? Amen. That man has more faith than he realizes. And you do too. And you do too. The devil is always trying to cheapen what we do. It's never enough. It's never, oh, you must have done something wrong. It ain't happened yet. What's wrong with you? Uh -huh. And they always put it back on us.
But Jesus said he bore our sins. He bore our sicknesses. He carried it all. So it's on him now. Once you begin to trust God, it's on Jesus to get you to where you need to go. And this man had an understanding of that because he was willing to go to him and ask him in a way that he was familiar with. So he was familiar with Jesus going to places and healing people. So he asks him what he knows about him. Go with me and heal my son. But Jesus wants to show him another way. He always wants to show us another way. So when you're trusting God, get ready for some news to get shown another way. Amen. It's not going to always come the same old way it used to come. If it did, God wouldn't be true to his word. He is the author and the completer of our faith. Would you mind letting him do his job? Huh? Just let him do what he do. All we have to do is obey instruction. And when we understand what the instruction is, then we can relax and let him do all the driving. Amen. It says here. Jesus said to him, verse 48, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Now, what kind of answer is that? Huh? He all pitiful and going nuts because his boy is on his deathbed. He comes up to Jesus and said, my son is going to die. He said, unless you see a sign. <laughs> this is, what? I came here for that? So he gets rebuked. Huh? That is definitely a rebuke. Jesus said, uh-uh. For you to get your boy healed, you're going to have to go deeper. Because you can. Yes. 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 We go deeper because we can. Yes. And he knows we can. Because he's going to go deep with us. Amen. You're not in this by yourself. The minute you pray as a believer, the minute you pray and ask Jesus to do something for you and you believe you received it when you pray, you're not only dealing with your faith. You're not living out of your faith now. You're living out of his faith. And his faith can be a wild ride sometimes. You understand me? And he fixes it. He always fixes it. Your God is such a God of mercy. You just wouldn't believe. Amen. He fixes everything. As the author and finisher of our faith, he has to. He's obligated to fix it. It's not on you to confess enough and know enough. I'm telling you, sometimes I confess till my tongue is dry. Huh? And that doesn't make it happen any faster. I said, oh, Lord, I done got myself over in the works again. You understand? I mean, we do that to ourselves. Never sure. Never. <laughs> am I doing? We never think we do enough to get him to do what he wants. He needs to do, which he's already done, to be honest with you. We're working on something that's done already. Verse 49, the nobleman said to him, sir, come down here because my son is going to die. Jesus said, go home. Your son's alive. Amen. Take that to the bank, cash the check, and spend the money. Huh? Amen. 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 Because that's the kind of faith we have in us.